at this hour and welcome to Adam's Health Media where you receive information about health, health education, innovation in health researches and so on and so forth and lastly about you, about your health status that is what this channel is all about welcome once again Now today I am going to discuss about different efficacy of vaccines, I mean of available COVID-19 COVID vaccines that we have. So I'm going to take them one after the other, even though we have we still have a lot of vaccines that are still in clinical trial stages. Some are still in stage three. I think majority are already in stage three and stage two. So we are hoping for more and more to come up. But I mean, those ones that are already available, that have been authorized and recommended for, I mean, to be injected with, uh, those ones that I'm going to talk about now. I will first of all take from Pfizer by MTech, according to evidence available from the clinical trial, this vaccine was declared to have 95% efficacy. Now, if you want to be fully immunized with Pfizer vaccine, it means you must be injected with two doses, which is ideally 21 days apart. So it is recommended in adolescents, uh, I mean 25 years and older. So it is stored at a temperature between minus 80 degree to minus 60 degree which is an equivalent of minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. The first one that I mentioned is minus 80 degrees centigrade to minus 60 degrees centigrade. The one I will talk about is Moderna vaccine. The clinical trial revealed 94.1% efficacy it showed a preventive care and symptom in people without any previous contraction of the virus. So it is expected to be administered in two doses and it has an interval of 28 days. For the storage, it is stored between minus 50 degrees centigrade to minus 15 degrees centigrade which is an equivalent of minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 5% Fahrenheit. It is also recommended for 18 years and, the, and, I mean, and above. Now, the next one I want to talk about is Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, from the clinical trial studies, it shows that it has 72% in overall efficacy while it has 86% efficacy against severe illness of COVID-19 disease. So it is now recommended to be stored in a freezer. It is rather stored between 2 degrees centigrade and 8 degrees centigrade, which is an equivalent of 36 degrees Fahrenheit and 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Presently, this is one of the vaccines that is administered as a single dose and it is also recommended for 18 years and above. AstraZeneca The clinical trial showed that the vaccine is 74% efficacy and currently the vaccine is not yet approved by the United States FDA but it is being recommended by European Medicines Agencies EMA as well as World Health Organization WHO. It is administered in two doses of 8 to 12 weeks and this vaccine is now being called Vaxzervia. It can be stored at 30 percent, I mean 30 degrees centigrade for 6 hours or between 2 percent to 8 percent at 48 hours. It can be administered in 18 years and above. 
let me talk about Sputnik vaccine. In the earlier published uh, data in December 2020, the report showed a 92% efficacy. It is one of the three vaccines in the world with an efficacy of over 90%. It is recommended for 18 years and above. So according to available data, the storage is being modified between 2 degrees centigrade to 8 degrees centigrade. It's now been administered in 59 countries around the world. And so far, as at February 2021, there has been about over a billion doses of this vaccine had been distributed worldwide. Isn't that big? That was so big. Sputnik vaccine that initially people, I mean, different countries, different governments were not ready to keep into because it's coming from Russia. And now it's, it's one, of, one of the vaccines that is being used around the world. So for other vaccines, the efficacy, I'm going to take the one after the other and just talk about, I mean, I mentioned them as well. So Novavax, this is a, a product, I mean, uh, by one uh, American biotechnology company in Maryland. So it's reported to have 89% efficacy. Coronavac, this is a Chinese vaccine developed by Slovak Sinov Biotech, sorry. It's also reported 50% efficacy. Sinopharm, also a Chinese pharmaceutical company. The vaccine is called Sinof Sinopharm Bipcov. Better still is called Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine. So it has 73% efficacy. Tianjin Kanzino. This is another Chinese COVID-19 vaccine that was reported to have 66% efficacy. Covaxin. This is India's indigenous COVID-19 vaccine. It is produced by Bharat Biotech and had 78% efficacy. So these are the available data that we have about all the various COVID-19 vaccines. And the reason for doing this is just for you to understand what were the results that were obtained during the clinical trials. And for us to know whether it is good for the market or not. And so many factors were put in place so, I mean, uh, before we can administer all these vaccines, and if you pass through all the stages, there are a lot of process that it goes through before it's been recommended. And all this procedure cannot be neglected, can both can only be fast tracked due to its uniqueness. And I mean, it's something that is ravaging the world, so it's needed a very quick attention. And I think in my next video, I'm still going to talk about why are people skeptical about this COVID-19 vaccine because ideally, a vaccine takes a very, very long time before its commercial production. But now, this came very fast. But I will not say, or uh, I will not say, I mean hide from the fact that it was there was a lot of combined efforts unlike before we are a pharmaceutical company or a company is will be trying to develop its own vaccine but in this particular situation we saw a lot of collaborations from one country and another country working hands together joining all their resources together and we, we saw how technology is doing a very great job here so in my next video i will discuss about all this and what we should understand about the process of formulating and producing vaccine the various stages it will go through i have told you about all these clinical trials 
before we because they are the one that we, the results from the clinical trials are the one that we use to establish i mean our, our scientific i mean um, reasons for producing this particular vaccine i hope you enjoyed this particular video for today it's very short i know <laughs> very short and if you are watching my video for the first time and you enjoyed this video kindly subscribe and open the notification bell the reason for opening the notification bell is just simply that when i i mean uh, post a new video you'll be notified easily and you can you can you can be updated with i mean with my new video and for all my returning subscribers i would like to say thank you so much you guys for for being there and thank you for for watching if you enjoyed this video once again then give it a top up you can put your comment as usual i will definitely come back to your comment and react to your comment and give you possible i mean i mean answers to if you have uh, some of the questions i mean if you put down questions then have a blessed day have a blessed evening goodbye see you in my next video